Sometime late last August, a friend of mine who is very wise and smart, who lives in LA, called me and she said, did you know you're going to get sprayed with pesticides in Santa Cruz? And I was like, no, that can't be true. But my friend is very wise and smart and she was right. I'm just going to give a brief overview of the facts for those who are new to the issue. This spray program, which is being conducted by the California Department of Food and Agriculture, so if you hear people throw around the acronym CDFA, that's who is being referred to, began in Santa Cruz and Monterey counties last fall uh, and is coming to the Bay Area in August of 2008. The portions of the 8th Bay Area that are affected according to CDFA's current spray map are all of San Francisco, Southeast Marin County, and all of the East Bay from the Carquinez Bridge all the way down our side of the hills, including the hills, so that includes Tilden and Wildcat and so on, to the southern border of Oakland. So you may have seen lists of cities that omit certain cities, but in fact all of the cities and unincorporated areas in that portion of the East Bay are included. The program's aimed at the light brown apple moth. There's 3.1 million people that live in the spray zones that are where this light brown apple moth has been found. There are about 300,000 probably that have been sprayed so far. So this, the, these problems, there's a lot of potential suffering here, a lot of potential harm that can be caused by this. Huge numbers of people. These products we know next to nothing about. We haven't seen anything about it. Um, the protocol of uh, spraying pheromones over urban populations is without precedent, precedent and is experimental in its application completely. But I'll tell you what I believe. I believe that the California ag industry, specifically grape growers, and throughout the United States, needed a pest. They needed a pest. So they had to go out and find a pest. And they found a pest that wasn't even a pest. And they found it so they could stop Australia and New Zealand from bringing produce into this country and grapes into this country that would compete with their business. And so they started the big lie. As of today, there's no reported quantifiable damage to any plant caused by the light brown apple moth. We have respected entomologists from the UC system saying, given the range over which the light brown apple moth has been found, it has likely been in the state for as much as a decade. Ag secretaries, ag commissioners in the counties report no, absolutely no damage. We have large populations of other leaf roller moths in California, for which we don't treat, which are kept in check by natural predators. If you look at the consensus health document that's on the CDFA website that was prepared by the California Department of Pesticide Regulation and the Cal EPA Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment, um, often called OEHA, you'll see that they very clearly state in their own document that this is the first instance of this product being used over populated areas previously. It's only been used aerially over agricultural areas. Well, they sprayed us on September 10th uh, in Pacific Grove, where I live, a beautiful place, neighboring Monterey and Carmel and Pebble Beach. And I'm able to work at home quite a bit, so I worked at home that morning from 7 to 12, and then I thought I'll go to Jamba Juice down on Alvarado Street. And the moment I went outside, for 5-10 minutes, I was sick. An area that was about as long as this table, with all these tables put together here, there were 29 dead cormorants just all laying there, just dead, and um, the, which may not seem strange to many people, but when you looked at this, this was, uh, they were all in pristine shape, meaning that um, they all died around the same time. This is a fairly famous example because it was in the Monterey paper, but uh, this man is an Air Force major and he's at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey. The irony is that he puts his life on the line as a pilot to protect people against governmental abuses of power. And yet his family was sprayed with something that proved toxic to his 11-month-old son. And he wrote, beginning on Tuesday, September 11th, our 11-month-old son developed what we thought was a simple cold. It progressively became worse to the point where he had labor breathing, severe congestion, and loss of appetite. He also seemed to act groggy and delirious. We brought him to the Monterey County Emergency Room on Friday. He was admitted for the weekend for albuterol, respiration therapy, and steroid cocktail drinks. Our boy has always been healthy. He was discharged Monday, so he was there for a couple days. Two weeks later, he wrote, my son unfortunately has had a bad relapse. This time they transferred him to a Stanford-affiliated hospital in San Jose. Anyway, the kid's condition ended up being re reactive airway disease, which is a lot like asthma. 
He had never had this day in his life it developed after the uh, spring, the day after the spring was started. Then they said, oh no, the death of these birds were attributable to red tide. Well, we go back to the animal rescue people and we say, you know, is this consistent with red tide? She says, we've been dealing with red tide for 25 years. The most number of birds that we've ever seen with red tide is 30. And she says, in the first three days, ex immediately following the spray, we had 248 injured or dead birds submitted to us. Anyone exposed to the spray will be breathing them. Things of 10 micro size, size 10 microns or smaller, once inhaled into the deep lung, which they can reach at that size, cannot be expelled. I started looking at the ingredients in the stuff that we were being sprayed with. And many of them are known aquatic uh, toxins. Many of them are uh, carcinogen. Many of them are, have this poisonous uh, effect. Symptoms included swollen glands, <coughs> rashes up to covering half of the body, fatigue, intestinal pain, chest pain, headaches, dizziness, uh, eye irritation, throat irritation, bronchial irritation. They sprayed us in Santa Cruz on Thursday night Friday morning when people went to the beach to do their walk, to walk their dogs, to do their jogging, that's when they started picking up these birds. It wasn't like a week later, it wasn't five weeks later, it was the day after. CDFA has chosen aerial spray as the first resort against a pest whose risk has not even been assessed. Sometimes entire families would get sick with similar symptoms on the same day. Pesticide that's being sprayed is manufactured by a company in Oregon called Sutera. It's owned by a gentleman named Stuart Resnick, and if those of you who uh, read the excellent article in the Berkeley Daily Planet this week noticed uh, buried way down in the article the information that Mr. Resnick is a big political donor and has given $144,000 to Governor Schwarzenegger's campaign. How did you get your law, the LBAM Act, proposed and passed in the same year when you tell us we have to wait a full another year? And the answer was, well, that one had an urgency clause. <laughs> an urgency clause? We want an urgency clause. The only real threat LBAM poses is its imposition caused by a USDA mandated quarantine to not tolerate this pest coming out of New Zealand. It really is a trade pest. It's a way of closing the door on products that come from areas that have this pest. And I really don't believe there's any, uh, any warranted um, emergency here for any aerial plant spraying uh, anywhere. And this was before they actually sprayed. Realtors now have to declare that houses are in the spray zone. So think of the loss of property values. Think of the loss of tourist dollars and business travel to the Bay Area. So you can make an economic argument that the spraying is going to cost the state more than that so-called agricultural threat is going to cost. There's a lot of potential suffering here, a lot of potential harm that can be caused by this. None of us want this apple moth to decimate California agriculture. More and more exotic invasives are going to continue to arrive here. We cannot spray for every new bug. It's not feasible. We're destroying ourselves in the process of trying to keep pests out. But I think we need to put people before plants, children before produce, public health before business interests. Um, and we need to insist that our governor, in particular, and state, unelected state bureaucrats who have so much power you can't believe they can actually design and, and implement a campaign like this, and they don't represent anybody. They're, state, they're bureaucrats, unelected officials. We need to make sure that their power is checked. Watch has agreed to be the pass-through for any donations you make. We have court costs, we have bumper stickers, we have photocopying, so we can really use your money. Thank you.